Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're going to start a new series on the Dell PowerEdge R730XD. In this video specifically, we're going to focus on CPUs. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R730XD. Do us a favor if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, so this is going to be the start of a new series. Uh, we're going to cover all sorts of things, CPUs, memory, hard drives, NVMe, uh, how to upgrade your BIOS, how to update uh, your iDRAC, uh, how to do mass updates, uh, plus a ton of other stuff. Uh, so, uh, you know, follow us and, and learn more about the R730XD as a whole. So, anyhow, this video will be specifically focused on on, uh, CPUs. Uh, so there are two CPU sockets inside the uh, R730XD. It's an LGA 2011 3 socket, which means it takes Intel Xeon E5 2600V3 or E5 2600V4 series processors. I will note if you want to use the V4 series, you need to make sure you have an updated BIOS and an updated firmware. Uh, otherwise, it might not recognize the uh, the CPU as a whole. Uh, we'll see people who will uh, buy a system um, and it's not updated, and they'll try to put the V4 in, and then they wonder why the V4 is not working um, or why the you know the thing they have a bad board or a bad you know CPU. And really, it's just you need to get a V3, um, and you can get a cheap one to update it, which we'll show you a couple low-end ones here in a second. But you need to put a V3 in, uh, update the BIOS, update the firmware, and then the V4 is what work. Okay. Um, on that note, people ask us all the time, hey, you know, what CPUs do you guys recommend? Um, and it, it really depends on what application that you're doing. Um, if you want something on the low end, a couple of our go-tos are the E5 2620V3 and the E5 2630V3. What's nice about these is you can get uh, a six core uh, 2.4 gigahertz for realistically not very much money. Put two of them in, you're gonna get 12 cores total. Not a bad system overall, uh, but again, that's going to be on the low end side. With the 2630 V3, you can uh, bump it up to eight cores, and it'll also be uh, 2.4 as well. If you want something where we call the value CPUs, which are the CPUs we personally like to build with, where you get a little bit more out of it, um, and it's not going to completely break the bank, um, and it's a, just a good value overall, um, I like the E5 2660 V3, the E5 2670 V3, E5 2680. 80 V3. All three of these processors are really, really great processors. Uh, you can get uh, 10 core, 10 core, 12 core. Uh, we'll put all the speeds up here as well for you. All of them are, you know, great options. And again, they're not going to be, um, you know, anything that's overly expensive. Uh, but they're also, uh, with this box, people like to sometimes really step it up and get some of the high-end processors, uh, which honestly is a, is a great idea for these machines because the high-end processors, you know, they're not crazy expensive. They're definitely more expensive than the value and the low-end. But if you compare uh, the processors that are coming out right now, uh, the AMD Epics and the Intel uh, scalable third-gen procs, th these procs are $1,000 plus dollars a a piece. Uh, some of them are even more expensive depending on what you're getting. So, um, you know, those boxes just for the processors, you're starting at, you know, $2,000 and you haven't talked about memory, you haven't talked about the, the, the chassis and so forth. So, um, a good option for a high end system that isn't going to be, um, you know, 10 grand overall is something like this where you can get a good storage box um, and still put in uh, some really awesome processors. So, what we recommend would be the E5 2690 V4, the E5 2695V4. Uh, the E5 2697 V4, uh, the 98 V4, and the 99 V4. Uh, so again, you're going to have 14 core, 18 core, 18 core, uh, 20 core, and 22 core. And we'll, we'll list all the speeds as well. Again, this is just a great option because uh, you can put in you know 40 cores into a box, 44 cores into a box, um, and it not be a $10,000 box. Uh, that's a great option um, on the high end side. Okay. Well, now that we know a little bit more about the other uh, different CPUs, uh, which ones you might want to use, uh, I want to show you how to actually pull out a processor properly um, without damaging the CPU, without getting thermal grease all over the place, um, and then we're going to actually show you how to install it properly as well. Before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear. Be right back. All right, I have my ESD gear on. We are safe to uh, get inside the machine. So I wanted to just lay out real quick everything that we're going to need in order to uh, remove the old CPU and install the new one. Uh, so here is the uh, CPUs that we're going to be upgrading to. Uh, these are actually not one we discussed. It's the E5 uh, 26. 40 V4, another great processor as well, um, and we're going to need a rag to clean the thermal grease off our old one. Um, this is uh, more optional. Some people, you know, just toss their old CPU. Personally, I like to, to save them just in case I can use them for something else or a different box in the future, or just give them to somebody. Uh, thermal grease for our, uh, the new CPUs that we're putting in, and then of course a screwdriver to remove the heat sink. So uh, we'll go ahead and put all this to the side for now, and then we'll go ahead and hop in, and we'll show you just how uh, easy this is. 
Uh, the main thing I would say is you just have to uh, be careful uh, when you're installing and removing the CPU. That's the, the hardest part, but overall this is an easy upgrade. So make sure your latch is set to unlock, pop it open, pretty much like any Dell server you've been in before. Uh, you'll notice there's an air baffle uh, that will be covering the two CPUs on the air baffle to actually list. It says CPU 1, CPU 2, uh, which is very helpful as far as if you uh, need to know which CPU. So you only have one in there and you're trying to install a second one, just let you know what's, uh, what CPU is which. And then you can just pull the air baffle off. You're just going to lift it straight up and put it to the side. Uh, and also note uh, on the motherboard itself under the CPU right here, it'll show you the um, uh, which is which CPU as well. So anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do uh, CPU2. So make sure you have it set to spin the right way. Um, I like to go zigzag, so we'll do this one first. And then come over here. see it kind of popping up okay so um, we've officially got the uh, the screws out so one of the things I always say is you need to be careful when you're pulling this straight up and actually one thing I'm gonna do real quick I'm gonna remove the air baffle here I'm sorry uh, the air uh, bank here because I want you guys to have a better view of this. So hopefully that helps just get a little better view. Um, so when we lift the heat sink up, um, I like to lift it straight up and you do need to be careful sometimes the thermal grease is just caked all over the bottom um, and you can make a mess. Um, so I like to just lift it straight up and try to get it out of the way so I'm not dropping anything in case there is caked thermal grease. And actually that one came off pretty easy but you'll see right here um, all the thermal grease that's on the bottom. Um, it definitely needs to be cleaned off before we uh, put it back on. Um, and then you'll see all the thermal grease uh, on the CPU itself. So this is where um, it kind of depends if I clean it what, when it's still in the socket or I take it out and put it into a tray and clean it. It really matters on how much thermal grease there is. Uh, if there's a ton of thermal grease all over, my biggest concern is I don't want to be uh, cleaning it and accidentally have chunks of the thermal grease fall off and end up uh, in the pins or in the socket itself. Um, so you do need to be careful here. In this case, there's not a ton of thermal grease. I mean, there's a decent amount, don't get me wrong, um, but it's uh, it's controllable. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a quick wipe off and get a bunch of the thermal grease uh, removed to start. Uh, one of the things I also, you'll notice I'm doing is I'm cleaning the actual uh, socket itself. Um, and of course you have to be very careful because uh, you don't want to damage anything any of the capacitors or resistors that are over here. Um, so in general this one wasn't too too bad. Uh, it was pretty easy to do. Um, and so now to actually remove it, uh, it's fairly simple. You want to push this latch right here down and push it in. So we're going to push this down and in and this will come out and then you're going to come over here to the other latch and do the same thing. You're going to push this down and in and when it does you'll notice back here this actually releases the socket and if you push this back down this is going to come up and you can pull it back and now you can actually remove your CPU and when you go to remove your CPU um, a couple things that I'll, I will note here this is the point where you can do some damage to your system um, and you need to be very very careful because what I've seen people do on accident when they're just going too fast or they're just being a little careless uh, they'll pull the CPU up and when they're pulling it up the end right here kind of drags in and you'll see there's 2,000 plus pins in here so if you drag it in um, you could just wipe out a row of them um, and then all of a sudden you'll have issues where stuff like uh, memory channels won't show up and it just it becomes a, a disaster overall so you just need to make sure when you pull it you come straight up and I like to grab right here uh, just because there's more space for my fingers to grab it compared to right here uh, just the way that the socket is set up so I'm gonna grab right here and then just lift straight up okay so again not hard to do um, but I will say you just need to be careful when you're doing it okay um, so you'll notice as we talked about I mean look how many pins there are they're just incredibly fragile um, this is the uh, the part where you just have to be careful installing it and removing it okay so now we're gonna put in our new proc and one of the things I wanted to note, if you look on the corner right here, there's an arrow. And that arrow is also on the motherboard right down here. So that's how you know how to line it up. Okay. So when I come in, um, you can really kind of do this two ways. You can kind of uh, pin it to the side and come down, which I'm personally not a fan of, but I see people do that and it's okay. I like to just come straight down. Um, again, it's all about just protecting the pins. Um, so I'm going to come in, have it lined up, come straight down. Okay. 
and really it's it's uh, again it's a pretty simple process but you just have to be careful with how you do it uh, that you don't accidentally uh, damage some pins when you're installing it okay so now we're gonna put this back together so um, first things first is um, pull this back up we're gonna push this down you need to put the latch down and we're gonna push it down and in and then same thing over here push it down and in and it's in the, uh, the socket very easy now we're gonna grab our thermal grease And you can do this a number of ways. I see people who will grab the uh, the little uh, plastic piece and will wipe it all over it. Uh, personally, I just make a square when I do it. I kind of fill in the square so that I know there's enough, and then I'll kind of do uh, some some dots on the outside or some lines on the outside. Um, and then when I put the heat sink on top of it, it will it'll actually like kind of uh, smush it together and. Uh, push the thermal grease around, uh, but you don't want to put too too much thermal grease because again, kind of some of the th same things we just talked about. If you put too 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 much on there, uh, it'll go all over the side, and you can worry about it potentially uh, getting into the uh, the CPU pins and damaging something down the line. So you don't want that, but you do need to use enough because you got to keep the CPU cool. Uh, so it's a fine balance. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I need to clean the thermal grease off the heat sink itself. Just get rid of the old thermal grease. And even though I'm doing it in the camera, I definitely don't recommend doing it over your motherboard. Um, I think uh, just doing it to the side is obviously the best way to do it, but I want to show you guys. So just getting it all nice and clean, uh, getting rid of all the old thermal grease. Okay. Now we're just going to simply line this back up, put the four uh, holes in, or the four screw holes in. And this is uh, very simple overall. All right, so really this is a simple upgrade overall. Um, if you're looking to do this at your data center, uh, please email us at sales at cloudninja.com. We have a ton of uh, CPUs for the R730XD. Uh, and for that matter, we have a ton of CPUs, uh, memory drives. Uh, we custom build servers. So if you need an R730XD built for your data center, we'd love the opportunity to earn your business. Uh, please message our team. Um, and if you made it this far, hey, Click that like, smash that subscribe. Well, thank you guys for stopping by. Take care.